Who am I? None of your business. <laughs> Just kidding, it's Old Guardian here. And on the subject of mysterious challengers, Secret Paladin is back. Secret Paladin has showed itself occasionally on the statistics websites recently, and now, this weekend to Asia Pacific playoffs, Samuel Zhao is bringing this Secret Paladin build. And of course I had to take it out on the ladder and try it out and <laughs> it's so awesome. It just beats stuff left and right. It's not quite a mysterious challenger deck of old. There used to be a card mysterious challenger in Hearthstone which played all the secrets from your deck. And this deck cannot do quite that thing. It does have the nearest substitute which is the bell ringer sentry, battle cry and death rattle to play a single secret. But obviously, that's nowhere near the huge swing back in the day. It is an aggressive Paladin deck. This is a very, very aggressive build. You can also tell that from the fact that it runs two copies of Divine Favor. So this deck expects to run out of cards. And then Divine Favor, woo, we get some more cards and then we can play again. Also, as appropriate for almost any deck right now, it's a Corpse Taker build. And Corpse Takers in this build, they get... Taunt, they get Divine Shield, and they get Wind Fury, this time from Tralmar Farseer. Again, showcasing how aggressive this deck is and how low of a curve it wants to have. Wind Fury Harpy, way too expensive. Tralmar Farseer it is. The deck wants to play aggressively on curve, it's important to get on the board immediately. Keep playing your stuff, take control of the board, then often buff up some of your Wind Fury minions for lethal. But sometimes you just grind it out in a more straightforward manner. Secrets make sure that the opponent is always feeling a little bit uncomfortable. You have a lot of refill because of two divine favors. And there are some surprises from Fungal Mancers, Sunkeeper Tarims, Vine Cleaver. A few fairly powerful cards at the top. And also when you start to run out of resources, there's a call to arms that can rapidly fill your board. However, unlike the Control Paladin builds, you don't actively mulligan four Call to Arms in this deck usually. You could keep it in something like a Warrior matchup in order to get some refill, maybe against Rogue because it's generally very hard to get that board against Rogue and Rogue is very bad at dealing with white boards, so Call to Arms might be important for you to swing the game against them. But in most matchups, that's not really what you're looking for in the mulligan. What you are looking for in the mulligan is your one drops. The Sergeant Squire, Righteous Protector, Secret Keeper. Especially Secret Keeper. Secret Keeper is like the best thing ever. And if you have a Secret Keeper, you can consider keeping some secrets. If you don't have a Secret Keeper, don't keep secrets in mulligan. And in addition to these one drops, the two drops that you're generally looking for is Hydrologist, because it also gives you more secrets. I don't tend to keep Knife Juggler very often, because in many matchups it's too difficult to protect. But if you happen to have a good way to protect it, then you can consider keeping that one. And the one drops Hydrologist and Unidentified Maul, which is a great weapon. Great way to gain board control. Those are really your unconditional keeps. And after that it starts to depend, because it's an on-curve deck. So if you have plays that go on curve, then you can consider OK Bell Ringer Sentry. It's okay if you have the early game already, Corpse Taker, it's okay if you have the early game already. But a fairly straightforward and aggressive deck overall. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, let's go take a look at Secret Paladin, back in action in 2019. I might try with this. Let's see. Let's take a look. So what kind of priest? No idea. What kind of maul? Sylvan recruits, alright. I think I want to play Hydrologist on two. But what if he plays the elemental? Does not play the elemental, that's good. So then we go for the Hydrologist. Wee Into I for an eye? Probably an eye for an eye. I expect there to be a bunch of big damage coming from this priest. I think I want to kill this one. This one is too scary. So I will coin the kings. And trade. I was going to coin the kings anyway. I just wanted to go to face. Now I felt I needed to trade instead. 
Need to keep the board so that this one does not die to a mass hysteria. Well, that makes it a little bit more difficult to do so. Because obviously if I kill this again, he placed Ciliax. But I don't have a way to kill this without using the Hydrologist. I think I have to just go for the kill here. But what if there's mass hysteria coming next turn? I think I'll just go for a single secret here. And hero power. So Mass Hysteria cannot clear this board. He might also play Zilliax now. He's clearly an OTK priest. Lyra. Now oh, that's interesting. I kind of don't want to lead Lyra up either. Doesn't test the Mass Hysteria coming. Call to arms would pull. Juggler Hydro or a secret keeper, maybe. Maybe a squire. Nothing too strong. Nothing on my Sisteria can't deal with. Then I have the Corpse Taker. Corpse Taker still has Wind Fury. I like Corpse Taker. I'll take down the Lyra. And I'll play the Corpse Taker. It still has Wind Fury. I like that it has Wind Fury. Do I develop a Secret Keeper? Yeah, I can afford to play a Secret Keeper here. That's okay. Doesn't make the board vulnerable to my Sisteria yet. Oh, nice Lich King. There's the Blessing of Kings. But... How do I push through the Lich King? Do I have to spend 7 damage on the Lich King here? I'm afraid I may. Yeah, otherwise I don't get the Kings. But he could have Psychic Scream. What if he just screams the board next turn? Then I will lose the buff. Does he have the scream? Well, if he has it, he has it. Let's see. Do I want to hero power? No, I, I don't want to give him a better scream board. Because this starts to look like a board that he kind of wants to scream. What does Ciliax accomplish? So that's 14. He might just be delaying a screen by a turn. And this is Knife Juggler and Maul. Let's make some tokens. Get some knives thrown into the Ciliax. Get some knives thrown into the Ciliax. Thank you. Burn. Oh, this is not quite lethal, of course, but it is a fair bit of damage. Puts him down to seven. But now he can scream, of course. But maybe he doesn't have a scream because he didn't use it last turn. Well, this is extremely unlikely to actually kill the big one. So, okay. Alright, Holy Fire is my middle name and I think we're going with this. Hunt the Mulligan everything. But we'll see. We don't know the archetype yet. I'll never tell. I think we go for the auto defense matrix here. We start with that, and then we add Redemption. He mulliganed everything, but he still got the Dream Cards. That's good. Redemption, Noble Sacrifice, then... Once he attacks into the Noble Sacrifice... I think we're... I think we play everything. <laughs> and trade there. I think this is acceptable. Let's try this for starters. Really? 
Using a kill command on that? That seems so excessive. No, it has divine shield. Woohoo. Of course, even divine shield it cannot kill the Diamo. And now I have a weak turn here. So. Let's see. Banking Strike is a good card. Need to go with the Bell Ringer Sentry, of course. Got a Noble Sacrifice going. Don't want to attack this one into something. Well, if I attack this one into something, it's quite clear for him that there's going to be a Noble Sacrifice, so. Probably not worth it. Second kill command being used. Okay. <laughs> this is like playing Secret Paladin of old. <laughs> that's, just, that's just so annoying. Secret secrets everywhere. He still has two mana left. That's not a powerful two mana play. I still have the protectors. Yeah, I still have stuff in the call to arms, so. Call to arms time. Oh, we even pull a knife juggler. Beautiful. I think I trade away all the beasts. He might have Rexar here. He can also have that. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Another Crackling Razor Maw Diamol combo. How many times can you do it? Alright, the Death Rattles. Cool, cool. Someone recruits. Well, he could have Unleash. So that's a little scary, of course. I could play the Fungal Mancer. This is simply a Fungal Mancer turn. But uh, what do I Fungal Mancer? The Divine Shielded Minions. Do I want Fungal Mancer the Knife Juggler? I want Fungal Mancer the Divine Shielded Minions, right? No, the, the Knife Juggler. I think this is correct. I want the hit over here if I get everything perfectly. Yes. This is what I wanted. Because these fellows are going face. You can keep your one tree for now. I have a tree, tree, divine shield taunt on the way. I've seen both kill commands. Alright. So he gets a full complement of secrets. Every secret available. Is he going to go for explosive trap? Hard to say, hard to say. There could also be Venom Strikes. I think I can fairly safely start trading still, even if there's a Venom Strike or something. Not Venom Strike. So, Wandering Monster or Explosive. So I hit over here. Explosive and then he get if he gets something good going after that, that might be a problem. This one is going face. We see if it's it's probably the explosive trap. That's the explosive trap. Okay. Then we play the champion small. But they can of course be unleash coming. That's possible. So this is the line. Now I have a redemption up, so if he just tries to push through with an unleash, then if he if he has to kill my taunt minion first, it just comes back. But he had Rexa. Honest, I did not expect that. Not the way this game had went. I didn't expect Rexa. Well, now there will not be an explosive trap, right? With some other secret. So it's probably Wandering Monster, isn't it? I can push through that with the Vine Cleaver. It's Vine Cleaver time. That's going to be Wandering Monster. And Vine Cleaver should kill almost any Wandering Monster. 
So I get a bit more value from my knife juggler. But now he has five cards that are not secrets. So if he finds Spring Paw or Unleash or something, that can be very valuable. Hmm. That's incredibly good too. Because I will have to kill this. Go with my knife juggler out there. I probably do, yes. I can't really play around Unleash at this point. But I have to kill the Tundra Rhino. I just have to kill the Tundra Rhino. Tundra Rhino is too scary. So we've seen Rexar and we've seen Explosive. I don't play the Blessing of Kings this turn. I believe something will survive. Now something might not survive. Because this one lived. So that might mean that and, uh, at least he gets a kill on the Wind Fear minion. Guaranteed. I had to lose two 50-50s for that to happen. Actually, I rolled four 50-50s and I needed to win two of them. And I only won one. So... Oh no. Okay, hopefully kill commands go to his own face. No! Okay, his own face please. My face. His own face please. No. That's rough. So definitely that was the nuts. Can I win somehow from this position? I know he has explosive trap. And I know he has wandering monster. So I could find Tarim. I think I need to divine favor here. Come on, give me the Tarim. That's not Tarim. I really wanted the Tarim here. So Cove Stakers have Taunt, and that's it. That's plus one attack, which is not very useful. Probably need something like Kings here. Attack that one over there. Hit this one over here. And then play the Righteous Protector and the Murloc. And I was a bit too slow, I didn't get to pick the secret. Bit too slow there. But he has spent all the kill commands. I am not dead to a single unleash unless there's something else that goes with that. Mostly his hand is beasts and secrets. So none of these cards can be an unleash. There's only three cards that could potentially be an unleash. I've also also already seen one Tundra Rhino. So unless he can make this charge somehow, then... So that's probably a freezing trap then. No, it doesn't have to be a freezing trap, it can be snakes. It can be snakes, it can be freezing. Well, I can't push 15 now, but now I found the Tarim. So what I need now... I have no more secrets in the deck. This hero power Tarim auto defense matrix turn. But I need to kill the scavenging hyenas. But attacking one buffs the other. So I need to sacrifice most of my board to kill them. I still have to kill them, right? I think I still need to kill them. Let's see if there's a secret coming. There is snakes. But I do have to kill the hyenas. I just had no way to push enough damage through quickly enough. Obviously not looking great right now. Well, when you face the absolute knock draw from your opponent, it can sometimes be difficult. So that's Freezing Trap, right? Does he have much else left? Oh, 
please. Oh, come on, don't troll a Leok. You can't be serious. Leok and the Venom Strike Trap. These no longer have anything. I just can't. I just can't do it. Oh, I'm, I'm dead no matter what. But not with these cards. I don't want these cards. I want better cards. Give good mall, please. And give bad cards for the hunter. <laughs> Silverhand recruits. That's typically not very good against these hunter decks. Because they all run stuff like Unleash. Redemption is good. Redemption can be useful. Assuming he doesn't have what it takes to kill this now. And I assume he doesn't have what it takes to kill it now. Dead rattles. I do want to get the redemption on the field. I suppose I need to trade the razor more. I think I tried this. There was an alternative line to play the champion small and just let this one go. I could have chosen that line. Using kill command over here is a bit surprising, although it does let him of course use this, but it's still not great. Flappy seems like a good call. Flappy is very weak in the current meta because of hunters. Drawing Farseer, yeah. Farseer is my favorite card. He might have a flanking strike. I think I still try this line. Let's not allow those dead rattles to come out yet. Of course, he can just hit that one into the Divine Shield and Flanking Strike if he has that. Does he have second Crackling Razor more? He does. What is he able to find? Oh, that's a lot of health. That's too much health, in fact. I can't push through this Misha. I literally have no way to kill the Misha in my hand. That's a problem. Well, it's only one problem among the many others. I think I need to push into it with these now. But not with the tree tree. Maybe I should have hit with the tree tree too, actually, because he can trade the tree too into that. Divine favor time. Is before Hydrologist. I can do Hydrologist Secret first, Divine Favor after. I get one more card. Noble Sack seems acceptable. Then we draw. And kill the Misha. But. Does he have the hyena? At this point he probably should have the hyena. Get down comes to protect me a little bit. And now he also managed to draw the explosive trap. That subject 9 on 5 from every hunter in the world is pretty difficult. Because that means that they always have secrets. Vine Cleaver is an option. Not a great option, maybe. What else can I do? Mm, Hero Power Fungal Mancer. Not great. This one has only Taunt remaining. Yeah. This is a tough turn. Especially because the Hunter has so much that he can do. Very tough turn. All the secrets are available to the Hunter now. I guess it's Vine Cleaver. Kill the one tree. 
So he has Explosive Trap, Freezing Trap, Snake Trap, Venom Strike Trap. No, there's probably, there's probably a... There's probably something else in the middle. But is this an Explosive Trap now? Oh, he goes for the full assortment. It's gonna be Explosive Traps and everything. How can I deal with this? I could start hitting these ones into the subject 9. Let's see if there's a freezing. There are some snakes. I don't mind snakes. And then there's explosive and wandering monster, right? But I want to trigger the explosive before attacking with this. After your hero attacks, when your hero is attacked. Actually, the explosive triggers before the wine cleaver anyway. That one is too risky to be left alive. Oh, but I still do want to trigger the explosive. So we hit with this one. Get the wandering monster. We get the explosive trap. Yes. And we start punching in. Then we do it like this. So we get rid of the snakes. But I have not seen any... I have not seen any... other good stuff yet, so if he doesn't... Okay, so there's a charging hyena, can it kill me? Maybe. That comes back, but of course without taunt. Well, that was actually pretty weak. That was surprisingly weak. Okay. Can we do something thanks to this now? Fungalmancer? Is there a Fungalmancer play here? Does he have an Unleash? Trade, trade. Farseer, Fungalmancer. If he had an Unleash, he would have spent it, right? So I think it is trade. Trade. Farseer. What does the future Fungalmancer. Noble sacrifice. Chill out, burn. And hit to the face. Maybe I could have saved this in case there's an unleash, but I had a read that there is no unleash. So I wanted to optimize my damage output. So that's freezing and snake, freezing and venom strike, right? Eight, ten. I think that's freezing and venom strike. Then we do blessing on this one. And we wind fury him to death. Let's try something like this. Third pro. Use Tetratlant to find about any hunt the decks, even faster ones. That is statistically unlikely. Because Tetratl Hunter is generally considered to be unfavored against faster hunt the decks. So, what kind of paladin? O, T, and K. So the option to try to get the Thermal Farseer out there. I probably have to try. But I think I need to trade here. He kept another card too, so that could be like Potion of Heroism. Drawing the Farseer obviously is not great. But maybe we can make it work. Oh, that was really, really tough though. Because I don't want this one to die to Consecration. So I need to get another Righteous Protector out there. But I really needed to win that roll. But at least I won that roll. So now this doesn't die to Consecration. But I won't be able to protect it for long. Pyro Equality obviously wipes this. I don't even have any buffs for it. Oh! 
Didn't see that coming. It's not an Exodia. It is not an Exodia at all. It is in fact Detrital Paladin. Well, luckily I have this champion small here. I think I need to do this over the Blessing. I can do ble try Blessing next turn. Let's summon some Silverhand recruits. Come on, give me another hit. Thank you. That was good news. I want this Divine Shield minion out there too. And then we push with this. Alright. So now Consecration would still leave two minions alive. I just need to wipe this board too, so... Trade, trade... Trade. Wait a, wait a moment, that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Let me count it again. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's lethal. Just hit there. Hit there. King's here. Push, push. Push, 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 push. Alright, I didn't have to clear the call drums. I gotta try with this hand. And if AoE is area of effect damage. So it's damage that deal so it's spells that deal damage to a white board. I think noble sacrifice here is acceptable. Then we go with the knife juggler and we might be able to protect it a little bit. Make him think you're a combo. Well, no, I don't have time for that. I mean, what's the benefit for me of making him, to make him think that I'm combo? There's no benefit. Probably not the divine favor time yet. Just push a little bit here. Next turn is a corpse taker. Try to get value from that. That's unfortunate. But this is a corpse take turn anyway. Is here. And I suppose we wait. Thanks to Noble Sacrifice, he can't get a hit into the corpse taker with this. So he doesn't have that nice divine. He doesn't have. Oh, that Mogushan Warden is pretty sweet. This is a fungal monster turn, right? Five. I'll make a tree, tree. What if he has a super collider? I will lose the divine shield also. He always has outs, no matter what I do. But I guess this is the line. I was kind of hoping I wouldn't hit there, but sometimes you hit there. This is the line. Super Collider actually doesn't kill the Corpse Taker. Hero Power Shield Slam doesn't kill the Corpse Taker. He needs to have a Shield Block. Does he have a Shield Block? No, but he has a Brawl. Oh, oh he wins the Brawl, hands down. Mm, sad. Sometimes happens. Sometimes happens. And we take Redemption. Play the secret keeper to this side, yes. Noble sack, redemption. We try, but now if he has reckless flurry, he cleans it up cleans it up quite nicely. I will only have a two one fungal elements in that case. There's the flurry. But I continue with divine cleaver and after that I will go for the divine favor. Start drawing some cards. He may or may not have weapon removal. We're about to find out in the near future. Still have a noble sack here. Oh, Dynomatic is so good here. I have to kill this also, so he can't magnetize the Ciliax onto it. Eight cards in hand. How many cards do I want to draw? It was with four mana I could play in my hand, but my hand is not very strong. 
It's probably good enough, right? I want to draw my hand full of cards. I currently have a Noble Sacrifice out there. So we pick something else. Redemption. That's a Redemption. Then we pull a handful of cards. Summon Recruits. Give minions plus one attack. And I do want to kill this because I don't want to let him Ziliax into that. But I think I could simply play the Secret Keeper out there. This order, obviously, if I happen to draw exactly Secret Keeper from there, then it loses some potential buffs, but it's still completely fine. We get the second brawl. So we've seen two brawls and a flurry and a Dino Medic all in the top 12 cards. That's a lot of stuff at the very top. Hydrologist survives. That was a snap pick. So what could it possibly be? Something that kills tokens, maybe? Like a Primordial Drake? Oh, that would be very annoying. But I need to kill this. I could try to set up something between the Fury one more time here. But I'm not sure if that would work out. Call to arms would pull Juggler and two Protectors. That would be another three minions. Four, five, six, seven minions. That's a full board. I guess I can do that. I guess I can do it like this. I guess this is fine. I have a lot of Divine Shields here. Those Divine Shields make life for him a little bit more difficult. I've seen both Brawls, so we'll give it a try. Noble Sacrifice currently cannot trigger, but even if there is a Super Collider it doesn't actually do that much. Oh, there's going to be a Ciliax that's going to be magnetized onto this. No, there was the Primordial Drake, which was exactly what I was talking about. As his best option. Give him minions plus one attack. So I could give my minions plus one attack. No Tarim. There's still a Redemption in all the defense matrix in the deck. So what if I play Bell Ring a Sentry, Blessed Mall, that's seven mana. I can also play the Redemption first. Redemption, Bell Ringer, Sentry. Yeah, this is the line. Redemption. Hero Power. Bell Ringer, Sentry. Blessed Maul. So with the Blessed Maul, I can punch through that. Then I just have to choose, do I kill the Eternium Rover? Yeah, I'll kill the Eternium Rover. I am slightly afraid of Ziliax. This might open up a way for a Reckless Flurry, but he didn't have the Reckless Flurry last turn, right? Well, maybe the Primordial Drake play was better than Flurry anyway, so maybe he has the Flurry. Then I'm only going to get a 1-1 one, one redeemed. Well, assembly can give him what? Lots of things, actually. We'll see in a moment. He had the flurry. He actually, did have the flurry. I'm only going to get a one-one out of that. Oh, it's a dragon build. I didn't even know it was a dragon build. That was a surprise altogether. Now I've seen both flurries, both brawls. We're still in the top half of his deck, and he has had every single board clear spell that is in that deck. So that's some pretty solid stuff. Now the corpse taker has nothing left. I can divine favor for a blessing of kings, but that is not enough. Redemption, Noble Sacrifice, or the Defense Matrix. Tarim is not strong enough yet. Summoning Silverhand Recruits. 
I mean, I'm pretty much all in at this point. He must not have a Zilliax. Yeah, he must not have a Zilliax out there. If he has a Zilliax, there's nothing I can do. I suppose I placed this so that he would not be able to get a good super collider hit. But man, he still he has drawn half of his deck and I've seen two brawls, two flurries, Dino Medic and a Primordial Drake. That's pretty amazing. Now he has to whiff a little bit. Come on, there's not another Dino Medic at least. But there is a shield. There's a crowd roaster. Okay. Well, that is a little whiff. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Not quite enough, but almost there. We have to try. Do I leave him with a mech up? Well, if he had a Ziliax, he would have. Would he have used the Ziliax? I think this is the only line I have. I need to try. I can put him down to two. Can he answer the board one more time? I've seen both brawls. I've seen both flurries. I've even seen a primordial drake from a stone hill. I can't divine favor the kings because I will kill myself in fatigue. So if I don't top deck the kings now, I don't have access to kings. There is the Ziliax that I was slightly afraid of. Now I need to top deck the kings. Top deck the kings and I can take this now. 50%. Unless there's more. I didn't even need to top deck kings because I had two divine shield minions. True. That was enough. That was enough no matter what. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.